Hello everyone and welcome to this video. The Flying Scotsman here and today I would like to unbox something rather special actually that um, that I received from uh, one of the members of a retro computing group I'm in. So I would like to thank YouTube user NotSock, N-O-T-S-O-C-C uh, for this item. Now originally it was um, it was posted in the uh, retro computer group that um, I help uh, administer and uh, he was actually looking for a buyer for this item and um, as you'll see I quite like the look of it so I reached out to him and I said well how much do you want for this item and he said 150 pounds so, I said that, well, again, as you'll see, that was a fair price. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, oftentimes, you, you know, anyone who knows me will know that I get extremely sore, some might say butthurt, extremely quickly about, um, about pricing for vintage computer things in the UK uh, versus what they'll pay out in the US and, you know, even parts of Europe. That said, I thought that £150 was actually a fair price, but I had to point out to him that it was a fair price that I could not afford. So he said, well, what can I afford? And I, well, I said, well, anything that I could afford would be offensively low. I said, the max I could really afford to go was £40. So the guy said, well, I'll think about it. And later that day, he actually said to me, well, look, you can have this machine for the cost of shipping. Princely uh, £15. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit cheaper than that. Because he said he would sooner go to an enthusiast than maybe, well, I'm guessing someone who'll just buy it to resell it. You know, and just scalp eBay users. So, I am an enthusiast and I keep saying you'll see why, but let's um, let's make that happen now. Let's uh, let's make it so that you can see why this machine is absolutely uh, brilliant for my collection. So we're away to unbox something, which means we're going to be using sharp implements. So uh, the usual rules apply. Make sure you're all nice and alert. Got a cup of tea to hand. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the camera, but. Um, Nice. Here yeah, we hope of tea. And I would also like to point out, as is normally the case, um, if you are the sort of person who thinks that it's right that Dominic Cummings should be running the United Kingdom, including Scotland, which would not, under really any circumstances these days, vote for such a an object then you probably are going to want to get a responsible adult to help you with this. So, now that that's out of the way, let's start unboxing. So this is a heavy box. It's, it's not just... Um, it's, it's not just um, big in terms of uh, distance dimensions, it's, it's big and heavy. Or as I might say in an alien comic, this cube of <coughs> this cube shaped carrying and uh, cur uh, this cube shaped carrying and storage container has an ex has quite a lot of mass. Oh, 
Jesus Christ, what is this? Right, yeah. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Things have went horribly, horribly wrong. I'm now starting to make alien comic jokes. It's, uh, it really is time for me to stop. Should probably go on holiday. This has been packed in, in bit, oh, oh dear, uh, <laughs> that, that's not went as well as I was hoping, um, <clears throat> bloody Hermes, right, hopefully, I mean, that's just a cosmetic kind of piece, hopefully, yeah. Uh, the rest of this is, uh, is okay. So I could use some. Eee. Right. So the main part of what we are unboxing then. Let's get this unwrapped and let's hope that. Uh, because this is quite well wrapped, that it has survived. Because I do, I do want it. Oh, there we go. James Crubbins. Well, I, I will say um, that not sock has. Uh, well, I would say it's taking packaging quite seriously, just despite the breakages we've had. Um, I mean, obviously, he did try and point out that the uh, package is fragile, but um, well, it was uh, it was delivered. Uh, by the good he gets at Hermes. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see now if we can kind of get this uh, this last bit of the uh, cello tape off. Oh, and whether I'm just yeah, you know what? I'm probably just gonna. There we go. I'll just cut this out. Ooh, we're getting closer. <laughs> the unmistakable beige. Ooh. Well, folks. I've always wanted to have one of these in my collection. Well, what is it? This is a Compaq Elite LT um, Compaq LTE Elite for seventy-five CXL, and that means there's a lot of numbers. It also means it's uh, it's quite old. Um, both screen catches are gone. There, there is no hope for them. Pray for the screen catches. And the keyboard. It's well, it's it's old. 
But this machine, I've, I've wanted something like this in the collection for a long time. I've wanted a 486 Compact. Does it have any battery? Nope. <laughs> what a stupid thing to have done. Um, so, I suppose I best find a power adapter for this. But before we do that, let's, uh, let me take you around. Let me take you on a wee tour. So, usual, we'll, uh, we'll start on... Uh, on the left, so we've got a plug here, I'm not sure what that does, in fact there's quite a lot here on this machine that I'm not sure what it does to begin with, but um, I'm sure I can find out. We have a compartment here, uh, that's for PCMCIA cards, nice. Um, I think this is for releasing this which actually looks like it's the hard disk. Uh, we have a uh, flippity floppity drive. Um, and then we have the battery, which I'm guessing is going to be completely uh, gone now. The NIMH, no doubt. Um, and then we've got... Um, the button, I'm guessing this is this is quite literally just the button for releasing the battery in the hard drive. Ah oh well. I uh, can't seem to operate it. On the rear of the machine, however, we have... Oh, that is quite nice, actually. Um, we have the uh, battle power connector. Um, we have a docking connector. And then if I uh, pull this door down, which is still intact, we have an RS-232 serial port. Uh, what looks like a PS2 port. I'm hoping that's for the mouse, but it's actually looking more like it's for a keyboard. Which isn't actually uh, the most... Well, it's odd, but it's it's not odd, if you know what I mean. It's, it's odd in that they would choose to give you a keyboard port rather than a mouse port. Um, but that's... Well, uh, my Toshiba 470... Uh, my Toshiba uh, T2130CT has that same... Uh, situation we have a parallel port IEEE 1284 and VGA out so that's a laptop and I've got to tell you there's a reason there's a good reason why this door is actually open with the um, with the docking connector exposed Um, if you found it difficult to believe that uh, I've managed to nab a compact uh, 475CX of any sort, well, <laughs> this, this is going to be even more difficult to believe, folks. I have the dock. Can you believe it? Can you, um, can you actually diddly doodly diddly doodly diddly doodly believe it? We have the docking connector. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> so on the back of this thing, we have a printer port, RS-232 serial port, PS2 mouse and keyboard parts, VGA, standard kettle lead, On the left side, we have Nassim. On the front, we have <coughs> a CD-ROM drive. Um, we also have another five and a quarter inch drive bay. And then on the rear, we have what looked like 
expansion card slots. Can you actually believe that? So we could put in what looked to be I say cards. That is pretty fucking brilliant. Not sure how to get into the case, but um, I'm sure a service manual would help us with that. Yeah, I think I think this is a network card and, and what looks to be a SCSI connector as well, actually. So that is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, the, the other button, we've got a power button on the front and a reset. Well, what I thought was a reset, that's actually probably more likely to be an eject button. So, what I'm going to do is... I'm, ah, Jen's amount of wet wipes. Oh, well. Um, what I'm going to do is find Anne Kettle lead and uh, we'll plug this in and see what she'll do. So I've found a uh, kettle lead. Hopefully uh, all this will still work after having had it salad tossed by uh, Hermes. Right. So I've just applied power. And there's a fan came on. So let's uh, let's see if we can dock this computer. slide the machine. Oh, there we go. And she's in. Could do with getting some uh, wet wipes on Amazon. Right, now then. Let's see if she'll boot. Well, that's a good sign. We've got um, writing on the screen. It's uh, it is quite faint, and um, these hinges are quite loose. And uh, naturally, there's no um, there's no valid system checksum. And the CD-ROM drive appears to not be working. Oh, well, that's no good. A valid boot disk. That does not sound good.
belts probably went on the drive. Now, according to the videos of this machine, it was running Windows 95, so... So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to see if I can pull the hard disk and then re and then reinstall it. Because that, I mean, it quite literally could just be something like that. Right, okay. That's sorted. Okay, let's um, <coughs> let's see if we can uh, at least get the hard disk going now. Now the state of this dock, it did have this crack in it before it was shipped out. So I knew what I was getting myself in for there. Well guys, it looks like this video is going to have to come to a premature end, then in that case. Um, <clears throat> I am going to need to find a way in, in which I can... Uh, <clears throat> in, in which I can actually uh, get this to go. Now, get an operating system on this machine should not be an issue. Um, because I should be able to just pull the hard disk and, you know, install DOS onto it using VMware or something. You know, copy all the install files for Windows. Um, you know, do it that way. Because I would like to make this a 3.1 machine. Only issue is that floppy drive. <laughs> That's kind of tragic, is that? <clears throat> I do like that actually. In fact, let's do that again, just for the just for kicks and grins. <laughs> now, does it have any battery? Uh, no, of course not. But um, there you have it. This is the uh, Compact Elite for 75CX, uh, Compact LTE Elite for 75CXL, docked with the Compact Smart Station. 
So, <clears throat> I'm hoping there'll be more videos about this system. Um, I'm hoping maybe I could get this floppy drive rebelted and, and get that to go. I think that's what it is. Just the wee sound. Um, that's... Uh, I can only assume that's uh, the issue because the motor is obviously in free flow. Um, and I should probably uh, check to see if I can get the hard disk to go. So, with that said, I think I will end this video here. Sorry, it's uh, been a little bit of a short one. But um, I would like to once again thank NotSock for this, um, for the opportunity to own all this. May not be the best condition in the world, but um, so what? I'm not the best condition in the world either. So, well, <laughs> with that, I uh, bid you all au revoir. Cheerie bye.